as a play caller when Saquon's playing at the level he played on Sunday, what does that do for you as a play caller? He, he did a great job. Um, he did a phenomenal job with the ball in his hands. I thought the whole line protected him well. Um, I think it was a full 11-man operation out there. I thought Saquon definitely benefited from that. He ran hard. Um, he played well. Right, but does he do things maybe some other guys couldn't? Even with yeah, everybody he's, playing he's well. A, he's a special player. He's absolutely a special player and a guy that you look for to make those type of plays. Mike, there's a stat that I think he faced the least loaded boxes of any running back in the league. Obviously, I know the defense makes that decision, but are there things you can do to influence that so you can keep the box from being crowded? Sure, sure. There's there's definitely things you can do within the game plan, um, whether it's personnel-based, formation-based, motion-based. So there's definitely some things that, that you look at to try and get those opportunities. After a game like he had, do you expect now that to flip a little bit where you're not this week, you could be facing a ton more loaded boxes, which could give you the opportunity to attack. I think I think you plan for it. Um, I don't know what, exactly what they're going to do. I mean, they, but um, I think you you plan for those things, and you have you got to have answers within within the scheme and within your game plan. You might get the two point conversion play. Is that something you had in your pocket from Kansas City days, from way back when, or anything? What's the background of the play? Was it Brian's yeah. play, or no? So I, as a staff, we kind of get together and put it all together, um, and, and come up with ideas, creative ideas. There's things that. That we that we really like, maybe we don't use them this week or last week, and that we carry over. Or there's things that we really like that we want to call for that week versus that specific defense, and uh, they were pretty unique that way. So uh, I think when you really look at the tape, um, they played it well. Saquon just made a great play to, to finish it. So that's a play that you guys came up with as a staff in this. Summer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you see, you see, um, in, in in my past, we've run plays like that, um, but. It's a version of it. It wasn't one that like we pulled exactly from my past, but it, it's a version of it, and I thought you know it certainly helped us. What's the benefit? Mike, what's the benefit there, Mike, of throwing it underhand as opposed to traditional? Overhand, it's just a, it could just come out a little bit hot, like quick, faster, and it's a little bit tougher angle because it's it's kind of close quarters on that. The underhand is just an easier, softer way of getting the ball like still quickly and accurately. Mike, you used motion on something like 38 of your offensive plays. Why is that such a big element of this offense? Yeah, I think anytime you can kind of distort the box, um, whether it's creating you know a numbers count like we talked about earlier, um, getting guys in different spots, influencing second level and third level uh, defenders, that, that helps whether it's pass or run. It, it could help whatever the scheme you want to run. So it, it, I think it helps also with the O-line, getting certain angles on blocks. I think it can help. Um, in the past game, whether creating certain types of leverages. So there's definitely a lot of benefits to it. Is that something you, that has been in other, like obviously we see it a lot in the Kansas City offense, especially like fly sweep motion. Has that been a part of offenses you've always been in, or is that something you really learned in Kansas City? No, I, I, it's been in a lot of the offenses I've been in. Um, and, uh, you know, it's something that I think is important for what we want to do. We were thinking on the, on the touchdown before the two point conversion that they're going to. Saquon and very effective on that drive that they're just yeah. going to crash down on him. Is yeah, that... we, we had that one in our back pocket. It was in the game plan. We had it in our back pocket. Um, we had some success running that play as, as the run. Uh, for the, I think it was the first touchdown. Um, and so, you know, we knew we kind of had a compliment to it. And once we kind of got in that situation on the right on the right spot, it kind of just fell in the place to, to run it. And then the guys executed it well. We saw, you know, Brian go up to Daniel after the interception and sort of animatedly make his point to Daniel. As a guy who's a quarterback in this league and we're passing game corner, what do you make of that? Like, what are the benefits of it? Would you do you do you personally like to wait till afterwards to have that conversation? How does that? What's oh, your whole opinion on that? On how Dave's handled it? Yeah, I mean, on, I'm, Dave's, I'm just going up to the quarterback mid-game and. Oh yeah, no, you you, you absolutely right. want to give him the information and get get the questions answered. Do whatever issue happened, you want to get it solved right away, and then be able to communicate. You know what we're going to do next. So, um, you know, I think I think there's 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 always a time and a place for that. Does that just show his personality though, or how much does that show his personality? Talk about Dave Moore, that he's willing to go and do that and you know, do it in a yeah, I mean, way I think. Everybody else. No, I think everyone everyone's holding each other accountable. Everyone's accountable to one another on the team. That's how we're. That's how we've always been from day one. We're all in this thing together. So I think you know we got to have those sometimes tough conversations. And I think you know Dave's does it in his way that I think makes him special, right? And that's how Dave's gets the best out of players. So um, you know I, I think everyone's different, but there's no right or wrong way on how to handle it. In my What's opinion. his way? How would you describe that? 
Say that again. Like Dave's way. Like, what's his way? Like, what's, how does he do it? I mean, I, I think I think it was what you saw. I mean, he, he kind of lit a fire under his um, under Daniel, and then we came back in the second half, put together a great 12 play drive to go down and win it. You know, Daniel had a lot to do with that drive, um, so I think it was effective in that in that respect. Like, did you, like, did you think there was like that was a really interesting way to end your first game as a play caller, right? We're going for two. <laughs> Can you just walk us through like when he says we're going for two? Okay, so like, what are your emotions in that moment? And then how many plays are you considering? Uh, can you just walk us through the process and your emotions in that moment? Yeah, um, so we, we had the ball before, we were talking through plays that we liked, really that whole second half um, while the defense was on the field, talking through plays um, that we really liked, things that we wanted to get to. And I think we had, we had a couple of explosives in that drive that helped us get into range. And once we kind of got into the red zone, we kind of settled down, we had really specific thoughts on what we wanted to get there. And um, the guys just went out there and executed it. Really, at the end of the day, we had full trust in those guys, whether it was going for two down inside the red zone. Like, I think as a staff, when we were talking about putting those guys in those spots, I think that, that meant a lot to the players to show that kind of confidence and, and have that kind of confidence. No, I mean, the, the, the beauty of it, and you guys have been around here throughout training camp, we've been put through a lot of different situations, two minutes, on the ball, no huddle, hurry up type situations that I think really prepped us, not only as a staff or as a play caller, but as um, for the players too. Those guys really prepped it, and that was great because we did it every we do it every single day, and we continue to do it. Oh, like, is, oh, the of, right. oh, is the amount of frequent substitutions that you guys had, especially early in the game, mm -hmm. something we can expect? And was there some confusion early on, maybe from some of the guys as, as you were doing all that? Yeah, I think I think we got to continue to work on it. That was one of our points of emphasis this week was just getting in and out of the huddle quickly, getting up to the line of scrimmage. Um, that way we can use those motions. We can use those shifts and things that we want to do and also give the quarterback more time at the line of scrimmage to operate. So that was a point of emphasis, and that's things that we're working on and things that we self-evaluated from the game. Mike, other than the, other than the interception, I mean, how would you rate Daniel's performance? I thought Daniel did a great job executing. And, you know, at the end of the day, when you evaluate a quarterback, you look at wins and losses. And he went down. That last drive to me was was one of those things that, that, um, that showed me he can – he can go and, and make plays when when things are tight, and when um, you know you're, you're kind of things are on the line. So, uh, you know, I thought Daniel operated well. You know, he's had a good day yesterday at practice. We just got everyone's just got to keep on getting a little bit better each day, and then we'll we'll be able to peak on Sunday and, and put our best foot forward. Thanks.